Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we live off. Uh, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia, in a bit of a different uh, place at the moment. I'm on my six weekly grocery shop, and when I do my grocery shop, I spend the night at my mum's place. So I'm at my mum's unit in Brisbane, and uh, I did a video up that didn't get finished. So I've just finished it this morning before I go to appointments and errands. So I am doing the quick intro in her unit to put out this video. So this video was from two days ago out at the property and I'm in Brisbane at the moment. So you're a little bit of a, a disconnect here, but you know, that's life. So uh, this is the rest of the tomatoes and the chilies and showing you what I got done with that, canning the pizza sauce and finishing up the chilies and things like that. So I thought I would quickly put this together and get it out while I'm on my shopping trip for you guys to have a look at and have a look at the short that I just released too, because it is the lady beetles that I released into the garden. And it's kind of funky watching them all climb all over the evening primrose that is covered in aphids at the moment. So have a look at that too. So I will try and film some stuff while I'm doing Christmas shopping today. And then I've got Costco tomorrow, home Friday night. So it is Thursday at the moment. Uh, so otherwise I'll see you in the next video, but I thought I'd still get this one out this morning while I had time spare before I have my appointments. So enjoy watching and I will see you next time. Thanks guys. So I didn't get to those tomatoes the other day. So what I did was I put the trays in the fridge knowing that, that I could come back to them because nothing is going to happen in the meantime. So I stuck the, I just stuck foil over the trays and put the trays straight in the fridge to come back to today. Once I pulled them out of the fridge, what I have intended for these ones is pizza sauce because we're completely out of pizza sauce. We do homemade pizzas about once a week. So uh, I do sometimes just pull some roasted tomatoes off the shelf and puree them up and use them as a sauce. Or uh, we use zucchini butter if I've got zucchini butter defrosted or a myriad of things, but actual pizza sauce is always really nice. So these were roasted up with onion and garlic already in them and they were salted. So well, all I did was I grabbed them all out and I put them into the thermix to puree them nice and smooth. They don't have to be excessively smooth because it's pizza sauce. It's not like it's a soup or anything, but still want them fairly smooth. So I did them in batches, about a half a tray per batch, just to make sure that there was plenty of room in the thermix to get that sort of vortex thing going to make it nice and smooth. And slowly did both trays fully in the pureed up so that I could then cook them off. So the intent here is to can these. So it's important to uh, cook them off before you put them in jars because you want it hot before you start the canning process, but also we want it to thicken up. We want it to lose some of its water. You can in this point strain the roasted tomatoes. When you roast the tomatoes, the watery liquid tends to go to the bottom of the trays. And some people will use like a slotted spoon, pull the tomatoes out and not use that liquid. And then that way you're already starting with a slightly thicker consistency but I like to use that liquid because there's flavor in that liquid so I prefer to use it all personally and then cook it for a little bit longer if needed or thicken it up in another way so I puree liquid solids everything all at once and get it all to a nice consistency using the thermics and then I just pour it all into a pot and get sort of moving on the next process of it so I filled up did it all the trays and filled up my pot as needed to get all of the liquid in there and get started. Once I'd pureed everything up and had it all in the pot, I added a whole jar of tomato paste. So this is one of those things I was talking about you can use to help thicken. So if I had some dehydrated potato, uh, potato uh, tomato skins, I could have used that powder to help thicken it up. I don't have any at the moment, uh, but a, t a jar of tomato paste helps as well to cr increase the color to that sort of vibrant red, but also helps to thicken it up. So it means you have to cook off less. So you have less liquid loss because that helps with the thickening. So I added a whole jar of tomato paste in there, mixed it all up and let it go. Basically, I'm going to be somewhat near it and I'm going to simmer it for however long it takes. Add some herbs if I want to, a bit of salt and pepper, a bit of sugar, whatever needs adding to it, just to get it to the flavor that I want. It pretty much doesn't need anything at this point. It's a pizza sauce, so you just want a really rich tomato sauce for the bottom, but I just want to cook it down so it's spoonable thickness rather than pourable. So I'm just gonna watch it and stir it on and off throughout the whole day in the kitchen now that it's at this point. 
The other things I needed to get done before I went on the shopping trip was the rest of the chilies before they went bad. So I'm trying to do things that are going to use as many chilies as possible in a sort of a, a most efficient time as possible as well. So with the rest of the red toned chilies, what I was going to do is I'm going to do another jar of ferment, but instead of putting it into chunks in the ferment, I'm going to puree it up into a, like a minced texture because this, I think what I'm going to try and make with this is maybe a sriracha. I think we might enjoy sriracha because it's got some sweetness to the heat as well, which is what appeals to us about the cowboy candy. So I'm going to give it a go. Uh, but it means that because it's a sauce, it doesn't have to be in chunks. It can be fermented in a minced mixture rather than in those chunks, which means I'm going to get more per jar. Uh, so all I did was I chopped them up roughly and then I put them in the thermix to mince them up. The whole time I was doing that too though, I was collecting seeds from diff the different styles of peppers to hold on to uh, so that I could use them to try planting out. So I separated seeds out from the nice ripe looking chilies that uh, from the different varieties. Always try and get the nice ripe ones, so the green ones that have gone red and the yellow ones that are starting to turn red because that means they're more mature. So nice big plump ones with good colored seeds inside. I kept some seeds from each variety and we will try planting them out if I can ever get anything to grow in the garden of course. But it's worth holding on to and seeing though no idea how these chilies were growing, no idea the origins or anything so what I get out of the seeds may not be anything like these chilies that I've got but it's not going to hurt to give it a go anyway so that's what I will do so while I was chopping them all up I kept all those seeds uh, once I got them chopped into chunks and stuff then I stuck them in the uh, thermomix to mince up and I filled a jar with it so I could fit a lot into a jar by having it minced and I just pushed it down to fill the jar and then did the same brine solution that I did for the previous one. So you want a sort of a 3% ish brine solution. Uh, so you weigh your water, work out 3%, add that much salt, and then you've got the right uh, ratio of salt to water in your brine for the ferment. And I had another kilner lid because I and glass weight because I bought them in a set of two. Uh, so I put the kilner weight and lid on it and it went to sit on the bench next to the other one. So as you can see, the tomato pizza sauce, I've been stirring it to make sure you want to make sure you're picking up anything off the bottom of the pan as you're going, especially doing it in stainless steel over the top of a of a uh, open flame gas burner, because you will get little bits that will stick to the bottom and they they can brown and you don't want that bitterness into the pizza sauce so when you're stirring it throughout like this is hours of simmering that it's reduced to probably half uh, it makes sure when you're stirring it you're skimming the bottom of the pan as well not just stirring the surface of it so once it was uh, all reduced down to where I wanted it the right texture that I wanted I put it in some jars now I've had some requests lately about canning so I'm going to go a little bit uh, in detail about this canning job to cover some details for people who've been asking. So if you're not interested or if you've already seen this sort of stuff, feel free to skip past. I am using recycled supermarket jars here. Now, any jar that has had a tomato product in it that you find in a supermarket will have been heat treated at some point because that's what has to happen when they make, when they jar tomato products. So generally speaking, any jar that you get from the supermarket that has been sealed in a way that the you know the, there's a vacuum on the seat on the seal they've been heat treated in some way and they're perfectly fine for using for water bath canning so i keep all my jars i am kind of lazy and i don't bother removing labels the labels will come off with use and that works fine by me so they always look a little bit tacky but that's you know that's fine you are more than welcome to spend the time to remove your labels now these jars here I purposely pulled out because they have 63 mil lug lid closures and that's what I had left in my containers. But I only had six of them left so I found six jars that will fit those lids. I have an order of lids on its way uh, but I think the courier company's got my address wrong so whether it turns up or not is another matter. Anyway, so uh, I had six lids so I found these six jars that have 63 mil openings which is a pretty standard sort of a pasta jar realistically uh, but I have a range of lids I buy some in every size so that I can reuse any of my supermarket jars I just find the irrelevant lid so I filled them all up 
as per normal so you, it's a tomato based product that is being water bath canned so I just take it up to the neck of the jar um, half inch headspace I think is what is required but I find taking it to the neck of the jar is a good sort of a point to take it to uh, it's a fairly thick liquid it shouldn't siphon too much because it's nice and thick and it's been cooked down so long that there shouldn't be too much separation of water in it either because it's a nice thick well cooked liquid if you were canning uh, the sauce before cooking it down when you can it and you pull it out you're gonna have it's gonna separate into two levels you're going to have the watery liquid on the bottom and the thicker liquid on the top which is perfectly fine you can just give the jar a shake and use it anyway and it's and hey I do a lot of my tomato products like that because I couldn't be bothered cooking it down pizza sauce I take a little bit of extra care but these 500 ml ish jars will do eight pizzas plus there'll be a little bit left over for lunch the next day to have on something uh, so I normally do can it in a slightly smaller jar but I'm a bit limited on choice at the moment so we fill the jars up to the neckline uh, I had to find an extra jar because I had a little bit more and I found a couple of mason ball mason lids that I had spare so I found a ball mason jar to use for that as well a pint jar filled it up the same to the neck now once you have filled the jars you then need to clean the rims and I was showing off my pretty little Australian Christmas tea towel there uh, so you're going to clean the rims so you use white vinegar now you don't use white vinegar on something that might curdle but you use white vinegar on just about everything else this is an, a tomato based sauce that is already quite acidic so it's not an issue uh, the other thing with these sauces, I didn't end up adding any other vegetables or herbs or anything, so I haven't added any extra acid to these jars. But if you had added too many, too much in the way of herbs or anything else, it's a good idea to put a bit of lemon juice or a bit of citric acid in these jars just to make sure that the pH is correct. Just a side note there. I didn't add anything to these. These are pretty much straight tomatoes except for those two onions between the all these jars and those few cloves of garlic, which isn't enough to kick it over. Clean the rims of your jars. So use the white vinegar and clean the rims of the jars. The shopping center, the um, grocery jars, the jars from my pantry, the lids are going to seal around the outside edge of the jars as well as the top. So make sure to clean all the way around the rim of the jars because you need those, uh, the twist areas to be clean as well. The mason jars are a little less of that an issue. It's more just the very top of the jar because that's where the lid seals only. But you want to give them a good clean. Uh, anything that you have that's sugary, you want to make sure you clean it really well. This is a tomato based product. It's not, you know, it's not like it's that sticky, but you still want to make sure that there's nothing on the rim of the jar that can impact the lid sealing because if it doesn't get a proper seal then that jar is not sealed it's not safe for your shelf so you have to use it straight away so give those rims a really good clean now the lug lids uh, were washed in warm water as well so remember that the pizza sauce is warm it's going into jars that were washed in warm water because you want to add you always want to add the temperature of your product to the same temperature jars so that you don't cause any thermal shock the lug lids were washed in warm water as well. That just helps to soften up the the rubbers on the lids. Uh, and it's just, I had a sink full of warm water. I wiped the inside of my lids with the vinegar because even though they're stored in little plastic containers, I live off grid with lots of sand and my kitchen's outside. So you'll see that I overclean things when I do my canning because I want it to succeed. And so I find that a few extra seconds is worthwhile. So I clean the inside rims of the lids as well with the vinegar and then put them on the jars. The mason jar is the same. It's a flat lid that I clean the flat lid for and then put a ring on. Your mason jars, you only tighten to fingertip tight. You don't want to use your whole hand, but the lug lid jars need to be really firm. So you want to crank them down nice and hard. Because I only had the seven jars, I decided to use my steam canner rather than the water bath canner, but the process is exactly the same. A water bath canner just has the water covering an inch above the jars. The steam canner only uses the base in water, which is beneficial for me because it's quicker, but it also uses less water. Uh, I filled up the base of the thing and then discovered a bug in it. That's what I am doing is removing a beetle that was running around. Uh, and 
you want the water just to the level of the tray and you want to warm that water up though because as we were discussing before you want the same temperature of water to the jars to the product so you don't want to put the jars into a cold canner you want it to be warm so I got that water up to a warm level before adding the jars placing all the jars into the steam canner so if this was a water bath canner it would just be full of water and you'd just be placing the jars into the warm water until the water is an inch over the top of the jars then you place the lid on if you're water bath canning I still put my lid on I just don't have a lid that locks but I put a lid on because it helps keep the evaporation minimal and it also speeds up the process of the water so the lid on the steam canner now a steam canner has a little dial on the top with different zones and depending on your altitude depends on which zone you need to get to for me I need to get to zone three which is the dark green so I get it started and then once it hits the dark green that's when I start timing if you were water bath canning it's when the water comes to a rolling boil is when you start timing and I do 15 minutes for these pint size tomato products for my altitude uh, the so once it hits the dark green I just start timer at 15 minutes I turn the heat off and then just let it sit for five minutes before taking the lid off while that was going I also had to deal with the jalapenos that I got so what I decided to do with those <laughs> is that they'll turn I'll turn them into cowboy candy because that's what we use the most is the cowboy candy and the syrup for marinades and sauces and all the rest of it it is our most used product when it comes to chilies so I don't have time today to get these done and canned I don't have enough lids because I've run out and that new water hasn't come in and I'm trying to get ready to leave for groceries so I just don't have time but I have to get these chilies processed or something I don't want to put them in the fridge as is because they just take up too much room so what I decided to do was the way I make my cowboy candy we don't slice it we mince it because we use it as a sauce or a drizzle not as chunks of jalapeno so um, for us mincing it works perfectly fine so what I decided to do was just mince all of them and then freeze it flat in Ziploc bags and then that way when I've got time I can pull it all out and I can turn it all into cowboy candy so freezing chilies does change the texture a little bit as they defrost they get a little bit sort of squishy which is completely irrelevant when you're talking cowboy candy it's a bit of an issue if you were going to try and eat them as you know slices or something but again we don't do that we only ever use them in cooking so we use them in soups in sauces in salsas in cowboy candy all that sort of thing so having frozen and defrosted them really doesn't impact their usability for us at all so I put the went through the process of mincing it all up in the thermomix in batches and then just pouring it into Ziploc bags and then once I had the Ziploc bags at the right point I then flattened them out re removed all the air so that they can go in the freezer nice and flat and they will take up very minimal space which is ideal for us uh, I weighed it up and I ended up with about three and a half kilos of minced jalapeno so that is going to make lots and lots of cowboy candy which is great because I may not managed to grow any this year so that's I'm pretty happy with that so once the pizza sauce was done uh, and had cooled a little bit I pulled them all out onto a wooden board and they have to sit there for 24 hours to allow the seals to create the lids to create proper seals after 24 hours you test the lids to make sure that they're sealed if there are any that haven't sealed properly just stick them in your fridge and use them within a week like you would any sort of product that you've just opened but if they have sealed nicely then I give the jars a wipe down before they go in the pantry if there's any food product on the outside of your jars and you stick it on your pantry you risk mold or bugs or anything on the outside of the jars so I always give them a quick wipe down before they go on my pantry and that and a label if you're going to label them uh, you should label them you don't don't do what I do and have children bring you random jars and ask you what's inside them and have to guess uh, so <laughs> label them and then put them on your shelf and then they are ready to use whenever you want so we've got seven jars here which is seven weeks of pizza which is great but we kind of need a little bit more so hopefully I can get some more tomatoes from somewhere this year scenes as my garden is not doing what it's supposed to do so any further questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I will answer them for you.